What's up everybody? Welcome to part 17 of our Practical Flask tutorial video series. In this video, we're finishing up this registration form. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, we're going to come on down to... Actually, let's go up to the very top. We're going to need a few more imports. Uh, so from WT Forms, we've imported form, but we're going to need some of the other things that we called. So we've got, we need form, boolean field, uh, text field, password field, and validators. So make sure you have those, otherwise we would be in trouble. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do, save that, and then uh, now the only other things that we, we need here is we need this uh, register.html page. So let's go ahead and make our register.html page. So coming over to our uh, directories here, template, and let's just uh, duplicate one of these, and then we're gonna call it register.html cool and actually before we get into that I want to show you guys a little something something so let's say in your script um, let's say we let's just delete validators for now from the imports and we'll save that now what if we come over here um, and we go sudo or us do service apache to restart if we come over to our website now and we refresh the website, we're going to find that we have an internal server error. So basically a 500 error. And we have absolutely no idea why. And, and so this is obviously a problem. The way that you can find out what the error actually is, is by running the init.py. So you could do python underscore init.py, run that, and then we'll come down here and we'll see, well first of all, okay, this was the problem, was a trailing comma. Uh, but we can fix that really quick. Let's fix that comma problem. And uh, let's run it one more time. Okay, now you get a validators error, or a name error that validators is not defined. So now we know that, oh, we're missing that parameter. So we can add validators, save that. And we can run init.py one more time. And we can see now it's actually running on the local host. So we're all good. So we can control, control C to stop that and we're good to go. So now we'll do service Apache to restart. Restart Apache. We'll come over to, I don't know what happened to our website. Let's just bring it up again. And we actually, it's loading. So, uh, so we fixed that. So anyways, that's how you can kind of find out why you're getting maybe a 500 error that you're not sure about. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate, did we already? Yeah, we already duplicated. So let me bring that over here. So we open up our register.html page. Uh, we'll leave the block body stuff, but we'll get rid of that 500 yo. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and work on this page. So in the block body, what are we gonna have? Well, we need our body tags as usual. So we'll add the body tags, body slash body, and we're good there. Now we're gonna make a div. So div class equals, and this will just be a container, container close off that div tag before we forget tab that uh, over because it's part of our body here and so we've got that now we're going to add uh, some h4 here so heading 4 and we'll say register cool we'll add a break just for like a line break there and then now we're going to import uh, something and this is going to actually we're going to need another HTML page but that's okay so from underscore form helpers dot HTML um, and that needs to be around uh, or in uh, quotes from form helpers dot HTML we want to import render underscore field and then now we'll save that and that would now would be a probably a good time to do form helpers so let's just take register we'll duplicate that and we're going to duplicate it to be underscore form uh, form helpers .html. So we've duplicated that. Let's open that up really quick. Let me bring that down here. And in fact, let me zoom into both of these since I bet they're kind of hard to see as I type. So there's that. Uh, pause here if you have any, if you've had trouble following along up to that point. Coming over to form helpers now. Uh, for <clears throat> form helpers uh, is actually just being imported. It doesn't need to extend any template. Uh, but it is going to be a macro. So macro render 
field. And then in parentheses, that's going to be field. And then uh, we have some more code. And actually, I'm thinking we will we'll just copy and paste this code. So let me do this. Copy and paste. So what's happening here is we're, this is just the HTML with the variables. So we've got the label. This one is going to be called safe for the password. So username, password. If there are any errors, we're going to spit out all of the errors. Uh, and we're just going to get through all of the labels, basically. And so macro is our Jinja templating ability to do any sort of uh, basically script sort sort of thing. And then render field, that's for Flask. And then what field are we rendering? We're rendering field. So uh, let's save that. And then we'll come back over to our register page. Um, and but every time I post the videos, the code should be made available. If for whatever reason this code is not made available, it's not very long. You can pause it here and copy it if you'd like. Or post a comment. Ask me to post the code. Uh, this just would take a really, not really long, but it would be a waste of time, I think. So uh, so there's that, and moving back over to register. So that's what's happening here. We're importing uh, that code, and now we're going to make this form. So now we have form tag, form, and this form method, the method of this form is going to be post, and the action of this is going to be register page. So when they uh, submit, it's going to submit on register page, and that's where we're going to have the register page basically asking if if there was a post. So that's why the action of this form is actually just sending them to register. And eventually, if they happen, if everything checks out, it'll, they'll be redirected to another page. So uh, now we'll use. Uh, Let's tab over once and we'll say DL and then slash DL. And then now we have all the parameters of this uh, basically form. And we have username, email, password, password, and then they have to accept the terms of service. So basically uh, five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to render underscore field. What is, what is that? That's going to be form.username. And then again, and in fact, let's just copy and paste this because we're basically rendering a lot of fields. So that, render field, render field, render field, render field. So form.username, form.email, form.password, password spelled correctly, form.confirm. And these are. Uh, like password, confirm, all that. That's in relation to, where are we? Here we are. Uh, this right here, right? This is the confirm. This is confirm, password, email. These are basically the IDs of those fields. Form.confirm, and then form.accept underscore TOS. OK. Now. Uh, we never ended our form, so we're going to need to do that. Uh, but also we need one more thing. Just outside of the DL there, uh, we're going to add paragraph tags, P and slash P. And um, we're going to have this be input. And the type, whoops, that needs to be a tag. Input. And the type is equal to, whoops, not that, submit. And the value equals register. OK, so that's our submission. And then now we'll close off the form, slash form. So that's our whole form. And then we're going to have some Jinja templating logic. And that's going to be if error. So if that error va variable is populated with anything, basically, is what if error asks. If there's nothing. Uh, to error, it'll be none. That means false, basically. So this won't run. And then um, you always want to just end if before you forget, because you Python folk are probably not used to needing to end your logic statements like that. Um, so if there is an error, we're going to say p class equals uh, error, and then uh, strong like this slash strong. And we'll say the error colon, 
And then after the strong tags, we'll do uh, the error variable. And then we'll close off, whoops, we'll close off the paragraph tag there. So if error, we're going to say error and what the error actually is. Okay? And that's basically it. That's all we need for our um, registration page. So let's just make sure everything is being closed off here. Looks good to me. So let's save that and let's restart Apache just to be safe but I don't think we'll actually need to since everything we did up to this point was just HTML stuff and we'll come over to our page moment of truth hopes are low oh we got a registration page okay so there we have it and let's go ahead and test it. if we have any errors I'll probably have to continue those on the next one but let's test it so we'll say the username is Python the email address is test at gmail.com test whoops password uh, I believe we didn't, I can't remember if we put limits on the password or not. Uh, where's our init? Right, there are actually no limits on password. In theory, I well, you have to have something typed in the password, but otherwise you're all set. So we will make the password like, I don't know, five and five. And I accept the terms of service, let's register. And int type of long has no len, so that's uh, in reference to here. Remember it was int, um, so let's let's just see what the original code. Let's see if that works. I just still I thought that, I'm pretty sure that's a typo, but uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll just refresh, confirm the form resubmission, and thank you for registering. Uh, so now we're there in theory. Uh, now I'm curious, what did we make? Oh, it was Python. So let's go to sign up one more time. Let's go, username is python, email address is test at gmail.com, password 55, I accept, register, and then you should, <laughs> wow, okay, I guess, I guess I was smart back then, and I just, this doesn't make sense to me, <laughs> like in x, x, maybe it returns the length first, uh, I don't know, anyway, uh, <laughs> Great. So let's add. Let's let's register one more user, and then we'll actually we we'll we'll check that because I just don't believe it. Anyway, Python two t password password register, and in fact let's check our other things too. So we'll sign up, um, and let's do uh, Python three. Let's do an email address of test test. Let's do password five password six. Let's accept the terms of service register. And then it says passwords must match. Okay, cool. That worked out. So let's do six, six, but not accept the terms of service. Register. This field is required. So the registration, I accept terms of service is required. So let's hit that. Let's do, let's just do PYT instead of anything else. Let's do five, whoops, five, five, register. And field must be between four and 20 characters long. Awesome. Okay, Python three then test at gmail.com let's just do test or te five oops actually five five and let's just do yeah te is fine because we just this is length parameter register fill must be between six and fifty okay so it looks like our registration is working decently obviously the email address could be this not even an at right register and that would be acceptable. So you might wanna have some logic that requires them to use a legitimate email address, something like that. Uh, but this should be fine for now, just for simple stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think if, uh, I don't really think there's anything else major I wanna show you. So now let's go over here and we want to access our database. I'm trying to think of how far back our database uh, code was before. There it is, nice. So mysql dash dash user equals root dash p for password, enter. And uh, here I've entered my uh, database. Now we need to use use uh, Python programming semicolon, change our database, um, and then now we'll run select all from users. Okay, so this returns all of our user information, and you can see actually here is our fancy passwords. So remember we actually hashed all passwords immediately. So these are the fancy passwords saved into our database. We have other information. We've got you basically user ID, one, two, three, that's working, awesome. Uh, user ID, username, this is their password, their email, 
and then settings is null for now because we didn't do anything, and everyone has completed the introduction to Python programming. Okay, so that's all set. Uh, we've got registration working. Now, of course, we need to work on the actual login and how does that work, but before we get to login, I do want to show you guys the how the password hashing works because actually, it won't equal, it won't look just like this. It will be different numbers, so, uh, or different uh, hash, I suppose. Uh, so I'll show you guys how that's actually working. So I think it's fascinating, and you should obviously know how it works and see how it works so you can know what's good password, because you can hash passwords all day, but you can have huge hash tables and find out exactly what someone's password is very fast. So there's a very special way to do it, um, and so we'll be talking about that in the next video. Uh, but anyways, it looks like our registration is working. Awesome. Uh, nothing I really need to add, I don't think, at the moment for registration. Still interested in X. That just is fascinating to me. <laughs> I guess that's how it works. I, maybe the first thing in X is the length. I don't know. Anyway, because um, later on you can reference the data in X. So X, and then you've got... Um, I guess probably what's happening is see, normally what you would do is x dot fetch all, and that would be all of the data that's in x, or you can do like fetch one and stuff like that. But anyway, more on those the fetching and all that later. So I guess that was the right code. Save that. Uh, let's exit. Let's restart Apache one last time. Make sure I didn't screw anything up. Come back to our website. We'll refresh. Let's register one more user, test at Gmail, 505, accept. And actually, as you recall, a lot of our passwords were five, like we, I used 55 five and only 66, six, I think, for the last user. This is a password of 55, five, and this is a password of 55. Five. So um, actually, they were they've created a different hash. So then, how do you compare those two? Crazy. Anyways, uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.